Hi everybody. You've probably seen maps like this. The extruded effect can add some visual interest to a map. There's probably a way to do this in QGIS, but it's easy to do in Illustrator, and it's just cool, so it will be the subject of this video. This technique will work with any map, but it's best used on maps of single countries or states or provinces. I'll use the United States for this tutorial and create a map showing the 2020 election results. First, I need a map of the United States showing state borders, so I'll download a file from the Census Bureau website. I'm using a Census Bureau file here instead of one from Natural Earth because the Census file shows the actual land border of Michigan. Some files show the state areas that extend into the Great Lakes, which I don't want. I'll load this file into QGIS. For this map, I only want to show the continental U.S., so I need to do two things. Remove Alaska and Hawaii and change the projection. I could filter the data to remove these states, but there's an easier way. I'll click on the Edit Mode button to enable it. Then click on the Select Features by Area or Single Click button. Now I can just click on Alaska and Hawaii and delete them. I'll also delete Puerto Rico while I'm at it. This leaves just the continental U.S. Now for the projection. I prefer Albers Equal Area Conic for maps of the U.S., so I'll select that in the CRS window. Before I export the file, I need to do one more step. I need a copy of this file that shows only the U.S. border, not the individual state borders. The reason for this will become clear later. To get this, I'll duplicate the layer and move it above the original layer. Then with the duplicate layer selected, I'll go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Dissolve. Leave the settings alone and click Run, then Close. Here's what that does for us. We now have a layer with a clean U.S. border. This is a temporary layer, so we need to save it as a normal layer by right-clicking on the layer name and going to Export Save Features As. When the window appears, save the file to your computer and click OK. Delete the dissolved layer and one of the other layers so you only have two layers, one with the state borders and one with the U.S. border. Now export this file as an SVG and open it in Illustrator. Here I've done my usual things, renamed the layers, deleted bounding boxes, and saved it as an AI file. I also moved the U.S. border layer below the states layer. Next, I'll change the state colors to match the reference map and also change the stroke to white. Since this map will be highly stylized, I'm going to delete the small islands around New England, Michigan, and California. With this procedure, small areas can look pretty silly when extruded, and since accuracy is not the main goal of this map, I can get away with it. There's one more step before we can do the extrusion. This operation makes serious demands of your computer, especially memory. Simplifying the file reduces this burden. If the file is too complex, the extrusion may fail. I'll select all to get both layers and go to Object, Path, Simplify, and I'll open the settings by clicking on the three dots and move the arrows to the left slightly. This reduces the map from 14,000 points to about 4,000. I also recommend quitting any other applications on your computer while doing the extrusion. Your computer will need all the memory it can get. And while I'm on the subject, be aware that different datasets can have radically different point counts. The shapefile I use in this tutorial has about 11,000 points to begin with. I've seen other shapefiles of the same area with over 73,000 points. More is definitely not better in this case. I have an upcoming video about different ways to simplify shapefiles, but for now Illustrator works well enough. We're almost ready to extrude, but first I'll select the U.S. border layer and set it to No Fill with a white stroke, then move it above the States layer. Select both layers in the Layers panel and choose Merge Selected from the Flyout menu. Save the file now. Now we're ready for the extrusion. Select All, then go to Effect 3D Extrude and Bevel. 
the 3D extrude window will appear. This is where we control the 3D effect. The effect I want is for the map to be tilted straight backwards like it's a jigsaw puzzle lying on a table. The three angle settings are the core of this effect. Click on the cube and move it around and you'll see the numbers in these fields change. For the view I want, enter 30 in the first box and 0 in the other two boxes. Leave the other settings alone for now. It should look like this. Click OK. It will take a while for the extrusion to complete, probably 5 minutes or longer. The progress bar will be nearly complete, then nothing will happen for a while. Be patient, there's a lot of processing going on. Eventually it will finish and you'll see this. Here's a better look. Pretty cool. I could have done the extrusion without adding the separate white border around the whole area, but here's what happens when I do the extrusion that way. Notice that the extrusion from California, Louisiana, and Long Island are different colors. This is because the color of the extrusion is based on the border colors of the shapes being extruded. Even though all of the states have a white border, this doesn't come through all of the time. By adding a separate white border around the entire area, Illustrator uses it to color the extrusion consistently. One of the great things about Illustrator's 3D effects are that they remain live. This makes it easy to try different settings. For this map, I want the map to be tilted backward more, so I'll click on the map to select it, then open the Appearance panel and click on 3D Extrude and Bevel. This reopens the Settings window. I'll change the number in the first box to 60, then click OK. Looks good. There's one more big setting, Perspective. I'll click on 3D Extrude and Bevel on the Appearance panel again to open the Settings window, then change the Perspective to 90, I'll also change the extrude depth to 30. The map also looks a bit dark, so I'll click on more options. This opens the lighting controls. You can do a lot here, but I'll just raise the ambient light level to 80%. Here's how that looks. And we're done. If this map will be printed, select all and go to Object Expand Appearance. This converts it into a normal Illustrator image, the 3D effect will no longer be live. A final note. Sometimes the extrusion procedure produces strange artifacts like these. I assume this is caused by a bad join, but it's easy to fix. Once the map has been expanded, you can select the offending pieces and change the color, or you can just touch it up in Photoshop. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.